Enola Holmes is absolutely monumental, and today in this video, I'm gonna go over 10 times Enola broke the mold of the time period. Welcome back to Screen Cinema, let's get into the video. Number 10, she wasn't properly dressed to meet her brothers. She fans already know that Mycroft Holmes is a more rigorous and strict family member who values a posh education and proper etiquette. The first time that Enola showcases that she's not the typical young lady of her time is when she meets them at the train station. She has no regard for looking proper, and Mycroft is appalled. When asked where her hat and gloves were, she had a witty remark. That makes her head itch, and the gloves, she simply doesn't have any. She then retorts back to Mycroft that he has their home confused with another, seeing as there's no carriage he speaks of. Make me look like that truly unlikely thing. A lady. Number 9, she talks back to Miss Harrison. One of the first real moments the audience sees in Enola's lack of etiquette is when Miss Harrison arrives. Mycroft believes Enola to be troublesome in her lack of etiquette as a lady it can be blasphemous, so he called him a favor with the hopes of sending Enola to a finishing school. Miss Harrison is disappointed at her body measurements and suggests a hip amplifier. Enola is appalled and finds the suggestion ridiculous. She also finds Miss Harrison's rules about proper clothing to be maddening. Enola tells her that she has no need for her or her school, which earns her the back of Harrison's hand. Number 8, Enola in her undergarments and no desire for a husband. Another example of Enola not being the typical lady of the time happened shortly after the encounter with Miss Harrison. So distraught by what she's expected to become, she has a few words for Mycroft. She angrily stops into the sitting room where her brothers are and demands to be left at home. Mycroft believes Enola to be uneducated, so she says nothing wrong with standing in front of him in her undergarments. Most women at the time wouldn't even fathom another man seeing him in that way. Another then shouts that she has no want or desire to find a husband. Mycroft resorts back that this way of thinking needs to be educated out of her. Thank you. You're supposed to say thank you. Number 7, she uncovered her mother's clues in Sherlock's. What makes Anola so different is that she goes against what society allows for a woman and shows that she's good at deduction and ciphers. When many other women of her time weren't allowed to pursue critical thinking or scientific studies, her mother taught her everything about uncovering clues to find how hidden messages. Audiences first see this when she realizes that the gift her mother left her might be something more. She uncovers a hidden message and what her mother left behind for her in her chrysanthemum painting. Audiences will see Enola use her intellect and problem solving skills at various times in a way that was not accepted by society at the time. For example, she uses her knowledge in chemistry to realize what her mother was really doing. She posts hidden messages in her mother's favorite newspapers and later deciphers a message that she deduces is actually from Sherlock. I'm sorry. Number 6, she disguised herself as a boy twice. After uncovering her mother's message, Enola decides to go and try and find her. To do so, she couldn't look like herself. She uses Sherlock's old clothes to disguise herself as any other young boy. A young lady on her own would arouse suspicion, but not a boy. This made getting around slightly easier, and it allowed her to be under the radar if her brothers were looking for her. It's safe to say that Enola broke the mold here, even if it wasn't a proper thing to do. She even shocks a male employee when she asks for his clothes at the Tewksbury estate. I shall bring that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Number 5, when she ventured to London. Part of Manila's plan to find her mother involves traveling to London. She goes alone at first, and it was definitely not proper for a young lady to travel anywhere alone at the time, much less to a big city. But Anola is special in the way that she sees the importance of this to be bigger than what society might think. She later also proves that she's strong-willed and adaptable when she looks for a place to stay. The shop owner where she bought her clothes gives her lodging, but it's not the cleanest or safest place to stay. Most upper class women during the time wouldn't even think to step in this room, let alone stay there. But for Enola, it will do, even if it has rats. So if I am to fit in and stay hidden from my brothers. Number four, her combat skills at the secret school and it went almost killed. Enola's mother has done a superb job of teaching Enola many valuable life skills, like sharpening a knife with a rock or how to fight. After getting dressed like a lady, she visits the only place where her mother wrote to her continuously, the tea rooms. It's here the audiences really see how much Enola broke the mold of a typical lady. At the establishment, she finds a secret school that teaches women jujitsu and shares off how well she can take care of herself. She later escapes near death when chased by a limb thorn and uses various fighting skills and even chemistry to get away. The idea of a woman fighting like a man would have been completely forbidden for women at the time. Number 3, she disguised herself as a widow. It would definitely be considered in poor taste to portray yourself as something you're not and use death as a disguise, but for Enola, it was a perfect cover to get into the Tewksbury estate. Once realizing that Tewksbury wouldn't be able to defend himself against Linthorn, she comes up with a new plan. There's no better way to avoid conversation than playing a widow, hence why Enola dresses as one. Back during the time, it was customary for widows to only wear black clothing. It was also ill-advised to use death as a ruse, and Enola showed that in times of peril and need, social etiquette be damned. <laughs> 
number two, Enola can embroider or eat like a lady. Sadly, Mycroft gets his wish and forces Enola to go to the finishing school. It's here the audience to see how different her manners are to most upper-class women at the time period. Although every other young lady at the school can walk with a book on their head and act properly, Enola can't and doesn't want to. She was brought up to value knowledge, chemistry, and combat, not cook and sew, and she doesn't care about these things. Audiences see Enola unable to do embroidery while everyone else's work is impeccable. It's comical to watch, even when Enola is at the table hunched over and slurping her soup. So different from the others, the two girls make fun of her, but Enola won't stand for it and comically hits her with a spoon, causing the soup to fly across the table at them. Number 1. Refuses Tuke's Berry's Offer A sweet and kind moment occurs near the end of the movie when Enola comes near the end of her journey. Tuke's Berry has taken up his rightful position and thanks to Enola for saving him surprisingly. His mother is also grateful and offered Enola a place to stay with them. Enola politely declines, but Tuke's Berry is the one who wants her to stay, to which she also refuses. It's clear that there are some feelings here, while many young women would jump at this opportunity. Enola wants to pursue her own life and career, not settle down and marry. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.